but it has been all systems go for the New Zealand-born Robert Whitaker since moving up to the UFC middleweight division. 6-0 in the UFC at 185 pounds. Tonight, at just 26 years old, Joe, will try to complete the mission and become a UFC champion. It has been fascinating watching the journey of this young man go from a kid that you keep your eye on to a man who has an air of greatness. And that's what I see when I see Robert Whitaker now. When I saw him stop Jacare Souza, it just was an exclamation point on that statement. You can tell this kid is on another level. He's in a new place. The question is, is that new place strong enough? Does he have enough tools in his toolbox? Does he have enough mental fortitude? Does he have enough technique, stamina, and ability to beat a guy who's one of the greatest athletes that's ever competed in MMA? Tonight's prep point is brought to you by Budweiser. This Bud's for you. Brian, it's been remarkable to watch the evolution of Robert Whitaker. He has evolved into one of the better strikers this middleweight division has ever seen. And tonight, that figures to be the heart of what he'll try to do against Joel Romero. In my opinion, he's the quickest guy in this division. And when his hand speed is on point, he's quick, he's accurate, and it also allows him to get in and out before anybody can touch him. Not just with counter strikes, but also with level changes and takedowns. His footwork allows him to control distance and dictate the pace of a fight. And pace is going to be one of his biggest weapons tonight. We've seen Romero fade before. Romero is a low-volume guy. And the longer this fight goes, the more the odds swing in the favor of Robert Whitaker, who's going to throw more volume. I expect to see him win rounds tonight. And if this goes the distance, man, you got to favor this kid because he is a very active and accurate striker. I think the question is going to be, can he deal with the wrestling? Is he going to be able to stop the takedown? And can he deal with those ridiculous bursts of speed and explosion that are possessed by Yoel Romero? I asked Whitaker about the magnitude of this moment and this chance for Australia, for New Zealand. He said, I'm trying not to run with that train of thought, put undue pressure on myself. But it comes down to this for Robert Whitaker, the biggest fight of his life. Now, just moments away for the UFC interim middleweight title. Silver medalist in freestyle wrestling and one of the best athletes to ever cross into this UFC octagon. Brian Stan, the American top team product. Yoel Romero, 25 minutes or fewer away from UFC gold. Middleweights are lying if they tell you any differently. When they get a call and this is the guy they have to fight next, they're thinking, oh man, what did I do wrong? Unless you're with him. This guy is just that scary. I mean, his fight against Leota Machida barely did a thing early in the fight, and all of a sudden explodes in a later round, takes him down, elbows him into oblivion. Chris Weidman was fighting him perfectly, doing everything right, out of nowhere, flying knee, knocks him out in the instant. Every moment you're in the octagon with this guy, you are in danger of him finishing you with something. We've just never seen someone this explosive in the octagon before. Oh, he almost knocked out his own coach. He just tagged him in the head. Doesn't look happy. But he's an incredible athlete, incredibly explosive, fantastic wrestling talent. And that's translated amazingly well to striking. His, his ability to absorb a shot is also pretty, pretty spectacular. Yes. 
and he recognizes the limitations of his style, and he knows how to pace himself. The question is, does he know how to pace himself for five rounds with a whirlwind like Robert Whittaker? Absolutely, and you know, when I had a deep conversation with him this week, and he talked about how they studied all of the foot placements of Robert Whittaker. Where does he step in his combinations? Really getting analytical so they can take this guy down and be on top and grind down that pace and control this fight. That was the big theme of this camp. Where is this kid has such good footwork? Where will he step? Where is he vulnerable for my takedowns so that I can control him instead of having to deal with him in space? I asked him about being a slow starter and he reminded me. He said, Brian, look, I only have 13 fights. Some of these fights early in my career, I was trying new techniques. I was taking my time just trying to get some experience. That's why I was fighting so slow. But when you hurt me, that's when I look to finish it. Yeah, he's only had one fight in the last 18 months. Of course, the unforgettable finish of Chris Weidman. And five of his six UFC knockouts have been in that third round, right? So he is a guy who changes things up in terms of his approach, his speed, and his power. And a lot of those knockouts have come later in fights. We'll see how it goes tonight. One of the best fights we can possibly put on paper, Yoel Romero and Robert Whitaker. With that, our tale of the tape is brought to you by Performance Inspire, the all-natural, high-performance line of sports nutrition, trusted by athletes and health enthusiasts. Visit pi-nutrition.com. Yoel Romero, 14 years, Robert Whitaker Sr., both men six foot even, 185 pounds for Romero. Robert Whitaker, 184 and a half, both men with a reach of 73 and a half inches. Now for the introductions for our main event, here's Bruce Buff. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. Presented by Budweiser, this buzz for you. Sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission, Chairman Anthony Mardell Jr., Executive Director Bob Bennett, Commissioner Stacey Alonzo, Skip Avancino, and Dr. Dan Carpenter. Our three judges scoring this contest in octagon side are Saul Diamato, Junichiro Camijo, and Chris Lee. And when the action begins, our referee in charge of the octagon, Big John McCarthy. This bout is sponsored by Budweiser. This Bud's for you, Metro PCS, who brings you closer than ever to the UFC on a fast nationwide 4G LTE network. And war for the planet of the apes. Winner takes all this Friday, only in theaters. And now, this is the moment UFC fans watching around the world have been waiting for. Live from the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. <laughs> Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, a mixed martial artist holding a professional record. 19 wins, four losses. He stands six feet tall, weighing in at 184 and one half pounds. Fighting out of Sydney, Australia, presenting the tough smashes Walter Way winner and the number three ranked middleweight contender in the world. The Reaper Whitaker! And now introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, a mixed martial artist holding a professional record. 12 wins, one loss. He stands six feet tall, weighing in at 185 pounds. Fighting out of Coconut Creek, Florida, by way of Pinara del Rio, Cuba, presenting the 2000 Olympics freestyle wrestling silver medalist and the number one ranked middleweight contender in the world, Yoel, soldier of God, Romero.
you know, we got over the rules in the back. I want you to protect yourself at all times, obey my commands at all times. I want you to fight hard, to fight clean. If you want to touch gloves, touch them now. Good luck to both of you. The wait for this one ends here. Yoel Romero, Robert Whitaker for the UFC's interim middleweight championship. The winner to face the undisputed king right now at 185 pounds, Michael Bisping, octagon side alongside UFC president Dana White for this interim right, middleweight ready. title fight right. tonight. Robert Whitaker with the nation on his shoulders trying to come through. He is in the blue trunks. Yoel Romero in red. The fight clock is brought to you by Budweiser. This Bud's for you. Romero out of the southpaw stance. Whitaker, the orthodox fighter. Romero does a lot of weird stuff. He lulls you into a false sense of security with slow motion sometimes. And you're seeing it here. Just kind of feels you out, sees where you are. But when he explodes, it's shocking. So unpredictable. A lot of guys underestimate the punching power of Whitaker. You know, a lot of his punches are short and they're crisp, but man, as he's shown time and time again, he lays people out with them. Whitaker less than three months removed. Little slip there for Robert. Less than three months removed from that win over Jacques de Souza that set up this championship opportunity tonight. back in the center of the octagon. This is really where he wanted to be. Dictate the pace and the space in this fight with his striking and wanted to be in the center of the octagon to do that. Whitaker really wasn't concerned about five rounds and I looked like Romero landed a kick to the body. Nice timing though on the jab by Whitaker as well. Whitaker's closing in very quickly. Beautiful jab there by Whitaker. The way he's closing the distance is very quick. And he really uses his legs to really snap in and, and, and hit you. It's not just an arm punch, it's a full body. Hook kick. <laughs> and Whitaker nearly made him pay with a counter right shot here from Romero. Whitaker goes down. We see a lot of times Romero, when he takes guys down, he sacrifices oh, top position because he just postures up and throws bombs. Here he, stri he tried to keep on, but that's a big mental win for Robert Whitaker, escaping that easily. That's a loss in my eyes for Romero, who used a lot of energy to execute that takedown and really didn't get much out of it. Try to fly me. Look at this, wow. Whitaker with a takedown defense. A sensation. Excellent hips there, somehow getting his legs back under him. But if you're in the corner of Whitaker, this is what you want. Get this guy to expend as much energy in round one as you can. And, and, and then look for him to fade later. They really do Let's believe go. that Romero Work. will slow down if this fight gets into the Come fourth on. and fifth round. Whitaker's takedown defense north of 91% coming in. Less than two minutes now to go round one. Whitaker wasn't too concerned about five rounds versus three tonight. He feels like the gas tank is really dependent upon who dictates the fight. Nice work reaching across the head, getting his back off the fence. I may be wrong, but I'm looking at Robert Whitaker's right leg and I think he might have injured it in one of those scrambles. There's something about the way he's moving that just seems a little off. It looks like the top of his foot has a cut on it. It's very easy just to, to break those, those bones on the foot. You yeah. kick someone in the knee or catch their elbow on a front kick. I mean, it might just be the odd way that he moves but I'm seeing this occasional straightening of his leg, where his leg locks, which just looks odd to me. Nice front kick there, though, with yeah. that leg. Whitaker faints. Under a minute here to go round one. Nice job by Whitaker.
Booker to use the Wizard and get back to his feet. 20 seconds here in round one. Amazing take down defense by Whitaker. Amazing. Not an easy round to score, though. Ooh. Ooh. Powerful inside leg kick. Ooh, oh. just, just flicked him. Good sign there. Uh, but Whitaker was able to throw that right. Watch your fingers. Just out of range with a massive right hand. It's all right, it's all right. Does appear to be moving a little bit gingerly, Jim. Yeah, Stoom, Stoom, just Stoom, seems Stoom, Fabs. Off. Fabs, why Stoom? Boy, his corner forgot the stool. They need to get him in there for him. Shit, bro, but. Shit, bro, shit, shit. All right, mate. Breathe. Breathe. Take a little bit of water. Okay, he's stomping on your left leg, okay? Huh? Yours? Okay, you need to make sure that you switch his stance yeah. left and right. Let him to think. You gotta drive with that jab. He doesn't like to push you to the stomach either. But he's waiting for you. He's it's a piano. So he, just make sure you don't fall into that spring. He's gonna be looking for time for the spring. Okay? Where does it hurt on your leg? What does it hurt? So we're gonna try to find okay. out when it happened, but I do believe he just said my left leg is trashed. I think this is where there it happens. Oh, that's it. So he's disguising it well, but there's something going on with his left leg, and it was Ready. from the very beginning of the first round. That's a hard oblique kick, and look, when you're a guy who really depends on movement and being light on your feet, big injury for Whitaker to sustain. That's what he's fighting through. Yeah, that is the lead leg, and you can see now hard for him to put pressure on it. I'll tell you what, though. Look, there's already some bruising on the inside of the left knee. Yeah, that was from an inside leg kick that Romero landed towards the end of the round. Yep. But Whitaker's having a real hard time pushing off that. But he's just throwing it anywhere. He has said in the past, no better place to break my hand than the octagon. He's getting it out of the way really quick yeah. now. Look at the way he stepped there. It was very awkward. Yeah. It doesn't look like Romero realizes it yet, though. I don't know how his corner isn't seeing it. Been a lot of those collisions as both men try to advance. Look like Whitaker ate a knee to the chest, though. And a beautiful level change from a Romero. Let's see if he can get some top time here, though. Staying heavy. And there, look, Whitaker had an opportunity to lift with Butterfly Guard there. And if his left knee is hurt, he couldn't do it. And he immediately left Butterfly Guard to close his guard. Not something I would do if I wanted to get Romero off of me. But if your knee is trashed, like he said, man, you're going to have a hard time lifting. Yeah, and if his knee is trash, it's going to be very hard to keep weight on it as he's trying to get back up to his feet and use it in awkward angles. He might just try to hold on here for Big John to stand him back up. Yep. And it seems like that's what he's doing yep. here. To this point, Romero staying active enough under three minutes here in round two. Yeah, I can see Big John send him up those shortly. And the big thing, too, though, is, is we've seen some vicious ground pound from Romero in the past. He's avoiding a lot of that as well. Now Romero's up. Romero tries to pass, unable to do so. Oh, Howie Whitter with a bit of sweep, but Romero takes his back. Get ready for Suplex City possibly here. Nice job by Whitaker to lower his base and get himself to the fence. Really nicely done. Yoel still with control of the body. And lands a knee now, tries to kick the legs out from underneath Whitaker, not happening. Two minutes to go, round two. Better pacing by Romero in this round. He exploded a lot in round one. The one takedown here, but even though he's controlling the clinch, not overexerting himself here in these positions and wasting energy. Beautiful trip. 
but Whitaker back up to his feet, turning into Romero. Hey, what though, that'll sap a lot of energy from your legs, constantly having to stand back up out of that tight waist and rotate through and pummel. Whitaker right landing that right knee. And Whitaker just allowing too much fence control time here. Going to dig that left arm in, trying to get double underhooks and get out of this position. Or reach around the head like he did in round one. So John McCarthy not seeing enough action. Back to the center. Less than a minute to go here in this second round of a possible five. Romero two for five on his takedown attempts thus far. Ooh. You see him, he tried to hide the wobble with that punch. Whitaker showing off a pretty good chin there after a big right hand from Romero. So Whitaker seemingly fighting through injury here in this UFC interim middleweight title fight. Romero just doesn't want to give him any space. He also doesn't want to waste too much energy himself. Clearly pacing himself. And he gets to take down at the very end of the round. I got it. Right into the blue Sit corner over. of the Reaper, Sit Robert man. Whitaker. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Take it easy, relax. Okay, breathe. Take a little bit of water. Push kicks, no turning kicks. Just drop in there. Use your hands more. Boxing more. Use your footwork yeah. more. You Ready. Okay. I know what's happening with your left leg. You're going to have to go through it. You understand me? Forget about it. Forget about it right now. Think about the guy and punch him in the face. You get me? Punch him in the face. Guys, you want to say something to him? And just keep it going, Rob. He's a long fight, mate. You've got plenty of time. Yes, sir. Plenty of time. Alex. He's going to be strong at the start of this round. Alex, you got something to say? Same thing. Be patient. All right. Be patient, yeah? Be patient. Quick. All right. So what are you going to do now? Still, please. Thank you. Good job. Joe, any thoughts on that message there to Whitaker from the corner? I mean, it's easier said than done to try to ignore the leg. The problem is he can't really push off of it correctly. You see, even as he's standing here, he's putting his weight on his right leg. We obviously have no idea how compromised it is, but it's an issue. It's going to affect his punching power. It's going to affect his kicks for sure. And it's going to affect his ability to grapple. Ready. Let's get up. The question is, how bad is the injury? How much of it is pain and how much of it is instability? There's a big difference. He can get through pain. Fainting nicely there. And has to put weight on that knee to do so. But I've been really impressed with Romero and, and some of the fight IQ we've seen from him. We've seen lack of focus before in previous fights. His fight against Derek Brunson, fight against Honey Marks, Tim Kennedy. He's had these, these laps of focus where he's gotten caught, where he's got taken down. Here, though, late takedowns in each round could very well be up two rounds to none right now and hasn't overexerted himself. Yeah, Stop. looks very Time. fresh. Go over there. They're gonna clip there, yeah. Tape Get up here. Off of Romero's glove. Give me that real quick. Cut that. Whitaker does right keep going there. with that push kick, but at least to this point in the round, he has been unable to land. Fight. The last round, he followed up that push kick with a nice hook and did land. That's one of his better combinations. Yeah, we have not seen Whitaker let his hands go like we're accustomed to seeing with those quick, fast, accurate combinations. I'm shocked that he's throwing so many kicks. If his knee really is trashed. But uh, it, it may just be a pain thing and not a stability thing, in which case it makes sense. He's definitely gotten away from his jab, which is an excellent strike when he sets up his follow-on harder punches. Landed nicely in round one. He's put a lot of pressure on Romero here. Boom! He clipped him. Big left hand lands for Whitaker. See if he can follow it up here. So a strong first 90 seconds to round three for Robert Whitaker. He's getting a nice shot, cutting him off too, keeping Romero's back towards the fence. Keep an eye if Romero starts to try and laterally move and escape these combinations. Remember what Whitaker did to Jacare, followed up a right hand with that right high kick, catching him circling away. As 
as we mentioned off the top, this has been a huge round for Romero in his UFC career. Of course, all of those previous fights were only scheduled for three, scheduled for five here tonight with the UFC inter middleweight belt online. Zach Wright finished Eric Brunson, third round. Machida, third round. Chris Weidman, third round. Tim Kennedy, five of six UFC KOs, round three. Ooh. Boy, and there's that nice right high kick. Distant strike starting to pile up for Bob Whitaker. Less than two and a half here to go, round three. So not much in terms of output from Romero through the left hand there. Whitaker counters, perhaps Romero starting to fade a little bit. Yeah, I believe so. And he, he's looking to just explode with one big bomb and conserve himself in between. Boy, that was excellent feint. Double feinting there as he closed the distance and, and really drew out a bad shot from Romero there. He's still able to move well, despite whatever's going on with his knees. He's able to close the distance well, explode forward, stuff takedowns. He's obviously got some sort of an issue, but he's making up for it. Uh, Romero's not even throwing strikes, not jabbing, not kicking. Oh, beautiful work there from Robert Whitaker. You can almost feel Whitaker's confidence rising here as we approach the final minute of this third round. Whitaker does an excellent job of same side attacks. A lot of people, if you punch with the right hand or kick with the right foot, they expect you to follow up with the opposite hand or leg. Whitaker uses a nice right punch, right knee, right punch, right high kick. A little unorthodox. Catches guys off guard. Looked like that right hand landed partially. Robert Whitaker came in with the best strike differential. Well, regardless of middleweight history. Romero's not throwing anything. Yeah, as, as fast as Robert Whitaker is. It is very evident that Romero's trying to conserve himself. away from doing just that. I honestly can't remember the last time he threw a punch. It may have been the first 90 seconds of the round. <laughs> he nice. him yeah. left hand right at the end. Romero takes a big deep breath as he goes back. Look at this. <laughs> Michael Biggs, Biggs mocking him and telling him to breathe. Oh, Rip. he threw up wow. the Cuban flag. This big rips the going Cuban going flag, throws it at Yoel Romero. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> wow. No mercy. I think that's big. Wow. Okay, okay. I got it. I got it. Boy, they were working overtime on him as he's jumping in the ball. Come back underneath, get with the right over hook, following with the left hook when he runs away. He's running away from him. Okay? Does that make sense? You hear me? Use your push kick, he's working as well. Okay? This is where it's going to get interesting, ladies and gentlemen. He's working the fifth round. I'm looking at Whitaker. He looks fresh. Despite the injury with his left leg. Had a little laugh in his corner as well. He started to really settle in in his fight. I think he believes that what he's seeing is momentum going his way. Don't forget, post-fight show for UFC 213 on FS1 immediately following the main event. You can see it on Fox Sports Go. For those watching in Canada, you can flip it over to TSN as soon as we are done. Whitaker so highly focused on his cardio and his fitness. No denying he's the fresher fighter here as we hit these championship rounds. Round four, underway. He's using a lot of push kicks, creating distance, and as... Brian was saying he tries to go right behind that with a punch. Whitaker moving a lot better here in round four than he was in round two. Lands the kick to the body there. That got Romero's attention. Very smart to attack the body right now. 
beautiful scrambles here. Whitaker up to his feet, trying to hit the switch. Can't make it, gets up to the cage. Really smart, he almost sprinted towards that fence. Yeah. There's a lot of energy here being expended by both guys. But if Romero can't get the takedown or can't get any damage to whatever he's landing some good knees here. But this is gonna be interesting to see how he fares in the last three minutes and 40 seconds of the round. This is where he had success in round two, where he basically just held on to yeah. Robert as much as he could. Even if he couldn't take him down, he's gonna stay here as much as he can and just rest land a few knees trying to win the round. Robert pummels under, he's up. He's up and he's free and he lands a nice knee to the body. Outstanding job by Whitaker to get back to his feet. Just over three minutes here, round four. No one talks about Whitaker's grab when we talk about a safe down defense. Here's a guy who actively competes in jiu-jitsu. Ooh, you saw something there. I'll tell you what, he's extremely well prepared for this fight, just like he was against Jacare. For Jacare's exact style of takedowns, he seems very well prepared to break the hold and pummel and avoid some of these takedowns and just the clinch from Romero in general. Romero's looking at his legs. He's looking at his legs, and remember that flying knee of Romero. It's one of his big weapons. And if he thinks that Whitaker's having a hard time getting out of the way of things. Big deep breath from Robert Whitaker as we hit the midpoint of round four. Romero 8-0 in the UFC coming in. Whitaker has won his last seven. Something's got to give here tonight. There's the name. Yep. It's just harder to time those techniques on Whitaker because he moves well, light on his feet, faints a lot. Yeah, even with that damaged leg, he's still able to cover distance well. Oh, he caught him to the left. So Whitaker follows up the body kick with left hand. Beautiful push kick to the body. And, and look how smart he is, right? Some guys would get over aggressive here. Try and throw a two or three punch combo in the pocket. But he immediately gets back out to his range, understanding just how explosive the athlete is he's facing. Oh, ooh. <laughs> just whipped with that left uppercut. <laughs> It was open, though. Let's see if he goes back to it. Romero's doing very little in terms of striking this round. Well, there's the significant strike picture. Joe caught him with that right hand. Has landed only 21 with just six minutes to go. Beautiful takedown defense. And that's huge because Romero needs another takedown to try and win this round. He controlled the beginning. Oh! Not sure if he dropped Romero there, but he stunned him with a right. Jabs Romero while you're out. Oh, he caught him with that left. Man, beautiful left hand. Oh, he rocked him. Quick check on the clock by Whitaker. It reads 34 seconds. Very little behind that kick. You can see how labored it was. And he's failing miserably. Stuck the shot and landed a beautiful knee. Look how sloppy that attempt is. He's exhausted. Whitaker mixing up his strikes beautifully here down the stretch in round four. And he is just so intelligent in his approach. Never gets greedy. Wow. Wow. Wow indeed. And look how tired Yoro Romero is. Okay, let's stop playing. Yeah. Let's stop playing okay. games now. Okay, let's get serious now. We have to see how you're He's dead, he's dead, he's really tired. Keep on drying, let's keep on drying. Listen to me, you gotta win this round, you gotta win.
put him away with punches. You get me? Put him away with punches when he. I have a toy. You Great. You are, this round's gonna decide, bro. This is what decides it. Don't let him take you to the ground. Do not go to the ground. This one, you punch him out. Stay on the outside. Stay on the outside, Wolf. Stay on the outside. This could be it right here, folks. This easily could be it. You ready? Personally, personally, I think it's 2 2. I thought Romero won the first two. Whitaker's won the last two. Both corners agree. Both corners told their fighters, you need this round to win the fight. Not much in terms of technical advice, at least when we listen in the corner of Yoel Romero. Fifth and final round of this UFC Interim Middleweight Championship fight. There's a land for Yoel Romero. Good jab by Whitaker right there. He's catching him coming in because Romero's telegraphing yep. things. Getting sloppy with his movements. And Whitaker's faster. The hand speed difference is, is very evident here in round five. Romero able to duck underneath that. Oh, beautiful oh. knee. Faked the right hand, came up the middle of the room. Oh, he tagged him. He's hurt. Whitaker now circling out of harm's way. Oh, big left for Romero. You can feel the tension here inside the T-Mobile Arena. Boy, Whitaker still has to be smart here. He cannot get greedy. Stay on the outside. Get in and get out. Big, deep breaths for you, oh, Romero. He tagged him again with that right hand. He's got a cut over his right eye. Excuse me, his left eye. Romero's pushing here, though. He knows he's got to win here, man. He's throwing some heavy strikes now. He is so tired. Ooh, good Not front kick to the bottom. Smart. Whitaker able to get the guard up to block that head kick. Three and a half minutes now to go. Whitaker's tired as well. You can see it. Good feints by Whitaker. Yeah. These punches are just getting slower and slower for Romero. Good front kick again. I love the body work from, from Whitaker right now. If I'm in his corner, and scream and attack the body. Again. Cut on your ass, do the Oh. That front kick to the body's money. Boy, both of these men exhausted. Romero has been cut twice in this round, once courtesy of a knee. This really is who wants oh. it most. These guys are beat down. It is all that clinch work. Round one and two, there was a lot of clinching, a lot of digging for underhooks. Man, that is so fatiguing. And well, these guys actually accepted this on six weeks notice, twice, the typical two months you get to prepare for a fight. And Whitaker less than three months removed from the win over Jacques de Souza, again attacking with that kick to the body. These will be a long two plus minutes. He just peeked at the clock as well. Romero on the counter. Once again, Whitaker gets that right hand up. He circles away from that power left of the soldier of God, Yola Romero. Boy, and there's no head movement. I mean, Romero right now is an easy target to find. It's just key for, for Whitaker. Romero takes a shot so well, though. I mean, he's got an iron chin. The only guy that ever really stunned him in the octagon is Tim Kennedy. Look at this. Huge. Whitaker on top. For Whitaker. You just don't know if Romero has the energy to get back to his feet at this point. This could be it right here. If he can keep him down here, and for Romero, it's imperative that he just, whatever he's got in him, he's got to explode and get back up to his feet or try to reverse the position. And he's not even picking his feet up off the mat at this point. Less than a minute to go. You can be sure Whitaker's going to try to stay active here. Elbows to the body. Total strike pitcher there, round by round. A big fifth thus far for Robert Whitaker. A zero attempt from Romero to get back to his feet right now. Well, if Whitaker could close the round here on the ground, it could be huge for him in what has been a closely contested 
championship fight. Look at this, stepping over, full mount, lost it. Half guard. Oh! Yes. One of those opened up a nasty cut. All these in the back of the head, that's why Big John ripped his hand away. Nasty elbows by Whitaker. Romero trying to get to full guard, can't make it. Trying to get back up to his feet. Outstanding ground work from Whitaker down the stretch. Standing cheer, ladies and gentlemen. Robert Whitaker and Yoel Romero go the distance in this UFC Inter Middleweight Championship fight tonight in Las Vegas. Wow. Both fighters seem to think they have done enough. What do you think, Bryce, Dan? You know, I, I feel like Robert Whitaker did enough to win the last three rounds. Thought he dropped the first two, but you know, you just never know. It's just like the co-main event. Yeah, I agree with you, and I would like to see the better scoring system in place for these championship fights. But I agree with you. I think Whitaker did enough in the last three rounds, and clearly, Yoel Romero conserving his energy. Let's get to the fight replay. Brought to you by Budweiser. This Bud's for you. And this is that front leg side kick. And there's the hook kick. There's a takedown by Romero. Front kick to the body by Whitaker. Interesting. It's an all-around and very, very smart approach by Robert Whitaker. I just don't think it's enough credit for his fight IQ. Well, if the judges agree with you guys, Australia, New Zealand, they will have their first UFC champion. Michael Bisping and Yoel Romero getting into it a little bit. Hopefully cooler heads will prevail here. Bisping and Cool Head don't typically go to success. That is fair. The official decision brought to you by Metro PCS, who brings you closer than ever to the UFC on a fast nationwide 4G LTE network. Bruce Buffer now to tell you who won the UFC's interim middleweight title. Ladies and gentlemen, after five rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards for a decision. All three judges score this contest 48-47. For the winner, by unanimous decision, and new interim UFC middleweight champion of the world, Robert the Reaper Whitaker. I'm here with the new interim middleweight champion of the world, Robert Whitaker. First of all, Robert, how does it feel to hear that? Oh my God. Wait, what was this? Um, okay, where was I? Um, how does it feel? Yeah, that was the most agonizing 15 seconds announcement, announcement I've ever had. It was, uh, it was tooth and nail there, but um, it's unbelievable. Robert, early in the first round, he threw a sidekick to your thigh that hyperextended your knee. Let's take a look at it. You went back to your corner and you said, my knee is fucked. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah that was politely putting it. I, um, I sustained in an injury earlier in the camp and I thought it'd be 100% by now and then the, the bastard kicks it <laughs> and it set it back weeks. <laughs> well, you did a fantastic job of hiding it. We were just noticing a small hitch in your gait and then you went back to your corner and talked about it, but you never stopped throwing kicks and you never stop moving forward. Um, but with a guy like Joel Mary, he sees weakness, he'll capitalize on every time he can. I'm surprised he didn't kick him all. Uh, it was definitely impacting my game. I was trying to establish a solid jab and it's hard when you lead legs bum. Now, was the leg instable or was it just hurting? Uh, it was instable. I reckon if he would've got a good one, another one, I would've dropped. It was pretty bad, but um, you know, champions made of this stuff. Champions are made of that. And you are a champion now, sir, and now, the most important fight will happen now. 
you will now face Michael Bisping for the undisputed middleweight title. Give us your thoughts on that. Um, listen, we were, we were destined to fight, mate. I think it's fate. We were destined to fight, mate. I think it's fate. It really is. Um, I'm happy to keep your seat warm until you're better. Give me a breather and we'll give it a good crack, yeah? First of all, Robert, that was an awesome fight. Romero, well done. I wanted to come here and talk a lot of shit, but it was an awesome fight. But the fact that you're standing there with that fucking belt on, like you're a champion, makes me sick. You should be ashamed of yourself. Here, take that, take that. Fight me for it. I'll see you soon, motherfucker. Hey, can, can I keep that? Dana White grabbed that thing very, very quickly. What, what are your thoughts on Michael Bisping as a champion and how you two match up? I think he's the champ. I think he's the champ for a reason. He's been in the sport for a hell of a long time. He's a veteran in the sport and he's a tough opponent. I'm absolutely honored to fight him. Uh, he's, he got disgusted when I was holding the belt. If it came with a necklace, I'd wear it. But, um, you know, here I am. This is the belt for number one contender and me and him are destined to fight, mate. Robert, congratulations on a fantastic performance. It was an honor to call the fight. You are the new interim champion. Congratulations, sir. Robert Whitaker, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here with Yoel Romero. Yoel, give us your thoughts on the fight. Did you think that you had done enough to win the decision? I said, give us your thoughts on the fight. Did you think you did enough to win the decision? Dale tu pensamiento en la pelea. ¿Crees que hiciste suficiente para ganar la decisión? Ah, this is a very close fight, Joey. Ah, I am honest. This is very, very close. Si de los jueces dijeron que ganó él, pues se la dieron a él. If the judges say that uh, he got it, he got it. But it was a real close fight. Did you realize that you had hurt his knee badly in the first round? Te diste cuenta que le habías lastimado la rodilla gravemente en el primer round. Sí. Sé que se le había que, que le había hecho daño y estaba esperando mi momento. Pero bueno, hay veces que Dios sabe por qué permite las cosas y si perdí la pelea, pues bendecido también sea el Señor. Yeah, I knew I hurt his uh, knee and I was waiting for my moment, but if I lost the fight, God knows why he does this. Thank you. Le doy gracias a Dios también por esto. I thank God Almighty for this also. You are still one of the very best middleweights in the world. Robert Whitaker will now face Michael Bisping for the title. Give us your thoughts on that and where you fit in to the middleweight title picture. Eres uno de los mejores middleweights en el mundo. Robert Whitaker ahora va a pelear contra Michael Bisping por el título. ¿A dónde es que tú cabes en ese en esa redonda? Hey, yo estoy aquí, yo. I am here. Yo no me he ido de aquí. Estoy aquí todavía en la lucha. I'm here in the struggle. I'm here, Joe. Never, never give up. Never give up indeed. Thank you very much, sir, for an outstanding fight. We look forward to seeing you in the future. Yoel Romero, ladies and gentlemen. Those post-fight interviews were brought to you by War for the Planet of the Apes. Winner takes all this Friday only in theaters. Australia has a UFC champion. His name is Robert Whitaker. It is absolutely incredible the assault this young man has had on the middleweight division. From Rafael Natal to Derek Brunson to Jacare Souza, now adding Yoel Romero to his list of victims. I am so excited to see him match up with the champion Michael Bisping. Experience, wisdom, two very intelligent, accurate strikers, youth versus a real veteran man, a lot to like in that one. A lot to like, it's a fantastic matchup, and I just love the way Michael Bisping handled the Hope Bell situation. He is phenomenal at, in, I mean, right away, psychologically attacking his opponents and finding a way to insert some doubt into their mind before they face him. I agree, but I think that Whitaker handled it like a real champion. I think the kid's fantastic. I think what he did tonight was amazing, especially considering damaging his knee so badly in the first round. The judges got it right. Back to back, two of the smartest performances by a fighter we've seen in recent memory. His win over Jacare, almost flawless. And here against Romero, after dropping the first two rounds, this kid is, is his fight IQ is through the roof. And he's only 26, and he's getting better. And given the fact that, as you mentioned, he just beat Jacare Souza and Yoel Romero back to back, he will likely be the betting favorite to beat Michael Bisping when they meet later in 2017. And on that post fight show, Bisping's on it. Whitaker will probably be on set. You can be sure there will be some more fireworks as those two exchange later 
tonight. What a wild night of UFC action it has been as usual here in Las Vegas.